The next part is the preparation for Umrah. How do we prepare for Umrah and how do we pre prepare for the Ihram? How do we prepare for the Ihram? Before we wear the Ihram, there are some actions that we must do before we uh, wear or before we wear the Ihram, uh, insha'Allah ta'ala. And that is, as you can see, for men and women, it's very similar. The first being that we need to remember we need to make the ghusl of ghuslul janaba ghuslul janaba which means ghusl after the fard ghusl that we have to do similar to that and also we clip our hair um, hair unwanted hair we clip our mustache and clip our fingernails this is all from the sunnah of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if however some of these actions are not done can we still make ihram an intention this is my question to the audience yes. yes your ihram is still valid some people assume that their ihram is not valid however we're going to umrah and hajj we should really try our best to um, do it in the best possible way we do things in the best possible way we can as muslims and we follow the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam so clip fingernails and remove hair, unwanted hair, and take a shower, ghusl for ihram. This is the sunnah. For men, you can put perfume, itr, okay, on your head and beard before wearing the ihram, after ghusl. And if there were some athar or some uh, remnants left afterwards, that is, there's no, there's la shay alayhi. There's nothing, that it doesn't harm him at all. Okay, it doesn't harm his ihram at all. Okay, and then... Uh, you put on your ihram garment, which is your rida and izar. Rida and izar. There are two parts, the top and bottom, two sheets. When you wear the ihram, you're not permitted to wear underwear for brothers. And this is sometimes uh, neglected. People are not aware because they read the books, but nowhere in the books they say to remove the underwear. And then afterwards, in, when they travel, then they, they realize that they have to do so. And it's a bit awkward doing it when you are outside somewhere, uh, very difficult. So remember, inshallah ta'ala, to do so. And because of that, it is important that you secure your ihram. Some of us are not used to wearing the ihram. So we should practice beforehand. I can tell you that when you're going to perform umrah and tawaf, uh, umrah and hajj, when you're in the state of ihram, a lot of the times I've seen and my observe, uh, I've observed that for example, a mahram, who's the man, mashaAllah, tabarakallah, who will be taking their, their, they're in charge of their women, guardians, right? But they're so busy thinking about their ihram falling out, they can't hold the bags or they can't do anything, they're always worried about their ihram. So we need to be secure. And how do we make it secure is a question, because if some people who wear, uh, I don't know if you call it lungi or whatever, you know the one that some Indonesian Bangladeshis wear, the one that goes all the way around. If you're used to wearing that, Alhamdulillah, you just tie it and you wouldn't feel so, uh, you know, security-wise, you won't have any issues. So, but those who wear normal pyjamas to bed or generally, um, they're not used to wearing the lungi or the, uh, the, the one that's stitched all the way around. Um, I would say that you need to practice and use a belt. You must use a belt. If you use a belt, you'll see you're secure, insha'Allah ta'ala. Then after that, once we've worn our ihram and our belt and our sandal, we have to pray two raka'ah or a prescribed salah if it is time for it. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam at one point prayed dhuhr salah, a fard salah, okay? And then made, yani made the niyyah. After wearing the ihram, prayed dhuhr and prayed the niyyah, made the niyyah. There's no two, you know, some people say you have to wear the two rakat for ihram. First of all, the two rakat that you pray, it should be, and if there is no salah time, if it's not a salah time, then you should uh, pray uh, two rakat for, um, two rakat for the intention of co uh, completing wudu. Uh, That's the intention, right? It's good, it's preferable, it's sunnah to do it af uh, after that, inshaAllah ta'ala. However, if you did not, Pray the four rakat of Dhuhr or Asr or three rakat of Asr, 
uh, uh, three rakats of maghrib or any fard compulsory prayer yeah and or it's not prayer time and there was no facility for you to pray two rak'ah after wudu you can still make the intention and it would not affect your ihram insha'Allah ta'ala I hope this is clear so this is an overview or understanding of ihram preparation for men for the sisters it is the same the sisters insha'Allah ta'ala for women they clip their uh, fingernails and toenails and also remove unwanted hair and also take a shower, a ghusl and this is from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam however, they do not wear the ihram izar and rida women wear normal, modest clothing with hijab women's clothing is normal, modest clothing with hijab preferably not tight fit and uh, modest insha'Allah ta'ala one thing to note people assume you must in ihram once you make the intention then the sisters must keep their face and hands uncovered their face and hands uncovered which reminds me and reminds all of us that for men should they wear a topi or a hat in ihram no in ihram you do not cover your head you're not allowed to cover your head directly with something on top of it so for sisters uncover face and hands and pray two raka'ah and the same way or a prescribed salat if it is time for it and this is the sunnah